Guys, Shanita's mom's faces on this episode is priceless as she don't think that they are ready to move in. Hey, you guys, welcome back to Romance Review TV with Lady T. And we're going to do another recap of Married at First Sight UK Season 7, Episode 22. We're in the second part of the home stays where the opposite couple that did not, I should say the opposite person in the coupling that did not get the opportunity to first go around, it's now their turn. So we're going to see some interesting things. Uh, when it comes to what uh, Sophie's parents feel about Jonathan, what um, Thomas's parents feel about that relationship that they have as well. And then we're going to talk about Shanita and Jordan. So before we do, take a second to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel to receive all updates. And please don't forget to like and share. Okay, so the first couple we're going to talk about is Sophie and Jonathan. Now, it was Jonathan's turn to now go to Sophie's side of town. And they have a little bit of a distance between these two uh, in regards to their residences. However, Sophie came right out the gate showing her accolades and everything at her parents' house because they went there. And they had this shrine of Sophie, as she described it as, I guess because she no longer lives there, they still want to make sure that they get to see their daughter every day. I guess. I got pictures of my kids around the house, too, and they are overgrown. However, um, I will say the biggest thing I saw, um, they had a little tennis match, and Sophie's dad in this episode, and Sophie did do an IG live because people was questioning her about whether her dad was concerned all about money and finances. It's because of what we saw in the show. Now, she had a different opinion. And if you haven't seen that, go over to my TikTok. I did post that response. Romance Review TV 1. Anyway, one of the biggest things that Sophie's dad want to make sure is that um, he's able to be that provider. And they worry whether or not that, um, especially if she wants kids, is he going to be financially in place to be able to take care of a family. Now, it gets even more intense when they sat down to have dinner with her parents and you know, they asked, how did it go? And, you know, they said, well, we've really been getting along, but we've had some upheavals and I got to give it to Jonathan. He came straight away and was like, you know, listen, I've said some things. And he went in talking about his preference uh, with um, her not having horse legs and from working out and being all bulky and things like that. And her father was like, you know, I guess he's going to have to learn not to be so jokey, jokey and wondering what he's saying or you know, think about what he's saying. Whereas Jonathan is still thinking that, you know, this is his preference. And if you haven't seen the video I did about preferences or not with both Married at First Sight UK and San Diego, I'll link that in that video because on the other side, we got Mitch saying something similar. But I think they can work through it and they'll be fine. So let's talk about Jenna and Zoe's homestay. They went to Zoe's place this time. And she has a pretty nice place as well. The biggest issues with these two is who's moving in with who after the experiment. Then she had this whole thing with this pickle jar of something in it that was given to her. And uh, Jenna was like, uh, that's a no. I mean, she was given the ick when she saw that. But the question is, they got to figure out and come to some form of an agreement of how they're going to stay or where they're going to stay because one thing about uh jenna is that you know not she not only you know has her own residence elsewhere but she also has a business too so i don't know if this is a brick and mortar business that she have or something that she can work remotely but at the end of the day that's something that married couples have to figure out is living arrangements you know and especially when there's distance like this Who's moving where? And this was a conversation they also came to the table in front of Jenna's parents. You know, whether or not they're going to make that decision about, you know, who's going to move to whatever residence. Now, for the most part, they said that they've been getting along fine. Obviously, they've 
figured out a way to manage the whole lifestyle with her being vegan and of course Zoe being a meat eater. But you know, um, I think the only issue that they have is trying to figure out the residents. So hopefully as time go on, they'll come to that conclusion. And even, you know, um, Zoe's friends, or I think this may be her family, um, you know, they see that as a potential, you know, maybe issue between these two. But can they figure it out? Of course, it's doable. I, they have to make some form of agreement and some compromises to say, listen, do we get our own place together or move in with each other? And honestly, I think they should get their separate places together somewhere else. All right. So let's talk about these two right quickly, George and April. Now, I got to say, you know, because there's a lot of controversy um, in the media right now, especially with his arrest happening yesterday of suspicion of crude behavior um, that was put out there. It's kind of, you know, looking at what's going on screen versus everything that's going outside. I can only speak on what's on screen until we get more details about the other ongoing situation with George. But at this point, they're enjoying the time away from the other cast members. And they seem at this moment to be vibing. She met up with her friend, Jose, which, of course, George knows Jose because he was at the wedding. And the biggest issue between these two is what uh, was brought up is George's insecurities and the fact of um, priorities of having a wife, but also having four children from a previous marriage, you know, and yes, uh, jo uh, Jose said that, you know, George, yes, he got four kids, but you also have to incorporate a wife now as part of your priority. So we'll have to keep watching and see what happened with these two. Kwame and Kasia. Now, of course, we already know the issue that started off with Kwame's homestays as because of the fact that he did not want to take Kasia to the house. Again, if you haven't seen his whole explanation on that and production new, Kasia new, go over to my TikTok. There's a whole explanation about that whole thing. And everybody is in the know of why he did what he did. But it played out differently on screen. Now, back to Kasia's homestay. She was trying to pretty much give a background of her life and, you know, her story. And it seems like Kwame was making a ton of jokes. And it didn't set well with her because as much as she was being serious, he was being goofy about, you know, some of the things that he had to say. And when you're in a deep moment, I mean, there's a time for everything. You want to be able to share some intense, deep moments. And if somebody is always joking them off or cracking jokes... It just really takes the air out of the conversation, which is why she had an issue. So we did not get to see her meet, I mean, see him meet up with her friends, which will be in episode 22, because it left us with that cliffhanger with this couple. So we'll have to wait and see how that all folds. All right, Thomas and Adrian. These two have made a lot of strides. What was surprising to me, because I thought they did have some intimacy Early in the season, maybe I missed something or misconstrued something. But according to what it sounds like, they have not had sex. And that's a big thing for Thomas. Whereas with Adrian, he just kind of want to take his time with the whole process of it all. He met with um, Thomas's girlfriends. And that was the topic of conversation. Why they haven't had any physical intimacy. And because of the fact that that's a big thing for him, but not so much for Adrian in this moment, again, I think it's been probably two months now, six months, I mean, six weeks now, you know, a lot of uh, what we see in the facial expressions is why there's no intimacy. And when you have one partner that is so physically, in, you know, want to be intimate, and then the other one that's like, okay, let's take 
you know, some strides, take it slow. Let's see how it goes. There's some questions and conversations that need to be had. There's got to be a balance. You can't be at two polars or two opposite ends of the spectrum with this. So some kind of way, and he's not pushing the issue because that's one thing you should never push, but the conversation has to be had and some, you know, um, you know, meeting in the middle when it comes to this, this conversation also happened with, uh, Thomas's parents and his mom is like, I know how Thomas is when he's really wanting to be physically intimate. And if that's not happening, there might be an issue of whether maybe they're not compatible in her eyes. One of the other things we saw Thomas said, you know, about, um, Adrian is like, either you're not interested in me or you're asexual. So I don't know if that's the case. I just think that in a lot of cases with these types of processes, people like to take their time when it comes to physical intimacy. Now they've been through a lot together. They, I mean, I, like I said, I've seen them kiss each other. I've seen them touch each other and things like that. So his parents was like, no, nah, you know, Thomas, you need to be done. I think you should leave. So we're going to have to wait and see what Thomas' decision is going to be about his relationship with Adrian due to the intimacy issues. And then last but not least, my favorite couple, Shanita and Jordan. So they have been doing so, so well up until this last dinner party. And it looks like Jordan is trying to fix what had happened. So just to kind of quickly recap this whole thing, it was the issue about he needs to feel like he actually is in love with the person in order to move in with the person. Now, the one thing about this situation is they did have some conversation separately at her homestay this week, and he's trying to reassure her, and she's pretty much putting walls slowly back up because she's not sure of whether this guy what if he's not in love with her at the end of the process and they don't move in because she's full steam ahead and with jordan dropping that bombshell over at the dinner party it definitely put them two steps back so it was time for them to meet up with her mom and i gotta say her mom is so adorable and her faces are absolutely hilarious in this episode so they did share the fact that they have been doing extremely well except when it came to what happened at the dinner party and you know they related to the fact that and, you know jordan tried his best to make that make sense in the conversation with the mom but the way her faces was was like i don't know about this but you know I really truly think that you, you have to grow. Love is a commitment. Love is not this instant. And I always say this, if you guys heard any of my recaps over the past couple years, you, love is a commitment. There's some days that you're not going to feel so loving towards your partner. Feel is the operative word. But how you work through that thing, you know, you really show how strong your relationship is, is when you work through situations and that's where that commitment comes in and love is a commitment and so i think jordan needs to see it that way you know they've been through some great things together they got a lot in common you know they they're really compatible with each other and for him to now put that roadblock in front of his face it really could set them back just let and let live progress and make the progress as much as you've been doing and you know with her mom her mom is kind of like i don't know i don't know but at the same time you know they got to work through the process it's only been about six weeks so we'll see what happened with these two i think they'll be fine okay so let's get the conversation started down in the comment section what do you think about thomas and adrian do you think that they can actually eventually take their relationship to the next level in regards to jonathan and sophie do you think that uh sophie's dad is going to eventually come around to jonathan's you know life and his way of thinking or does jonathan need to kind of fix some things and then shanita and jordan what about these two do you think they're going to be okay or him falling in love is going to be a deal breaker in the end 
So until the next video, like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you soon. Bye.